only the proposer and the implementer. You, the people's representatives, are the deciders. But, <laughs> but I warn you, if you continue to violate your constitutional responsibility to serve your constituents, and instead serve yourselves and the big money interests you are indebted to, I'll go over your heads to the American people and ask them to retire all of you, regardless of party who ignore the Constitution and attempt to protect the crooked, corporate-dominated status quo. <laughs> the American people should never again cast a single vote for anybody who takes money from corporations or their lobbyists. Yeah. We must sever the connection between money and political power. Now this means electoral reform and media reform. Now, the latter can be done now. I have ordered the Federal Communications Commission to reinstate the Fairness Doctrine at the time of the and also to re-implement the ban on multiple ownership. A free press is incompatible with corporate domination of the <laughs> Now electoral reform is a little more complicated. The immediate need is for paper ballots. <laughs> All means of voting which do not produce a paper ballot which can be counted, recounted, and audited as necessary violate the constitutional principle of one person, one vote, and are therefore unconstitutional. All such systems must be replaced before the next election in 2008. Now we also need instant runoff voting, proportional representation, the elimination of burdensome petition requirements for qualifying third party and independent candidates, making election day a federal holiday, and true campaign finance reform. Now, we can't have true campaign finance reform so long as corporations can claim a First Amendment free speech right to spend as much money on campaigns as they want. We must therefore restore the original intent of the Constitution. And I propose an amendment saying, quote, corporations and other fictitious entities are not persons under this Constitution. <laughs> shall have none of the rights and privileges thereof." Unquote. Once we separate big money and political power, everything becomes possible. In this richest of nations, we can and we will guarantee every American access to a good education, a decent job at a living wage, health care, and the undiluted protections of the Constitution and Bill of Rights. Fear of terrorism is not going to make this nation a police state. Now some, particularly my libertarian friends, may disagree with me, but I believe that the general welfare clause of this Constitution empowers the government to guarantee basic health care to all Americans. but we will not continue the borrow and spend budgets we have inherited, which burden our grandchildren with trillions in debt. The only fiscally responsible way to provide universal health care is to kick the insurance companies out of health care completely. This eliminates their overhead, their profit, which accounts for almost half of every health care dollar, their bean counting, and their interference between doctor and patient. I therefore propose a doctor-run, single-payer national health program. As 
a step toward the living wage, I propose that the minimum wage be indexed for inflation and over a 10-year period be raised to what it would have been had it been so indexed at its creation, about $14 an hour in 2006 dollars. I also propose a change in corporate law which currently requires CEOs and directors to maximize profits for shareholders to the exclusion of all else. The new law should recognize corporate responsibility to its workers, its community, its environment, and society at large. Now, as you know, the previous administration resigned under threat of impeachment. <laughs> Yay. Over their exploitation of the 9-11 tragedy to deceive this nation into unnecessary and illegal wars of aggression. The evidence of their guilt was overwhelming. This evidence is in the PNAC document calling for the permanent occupation of Iraq justified by a new Pearl Harbor. It is in Richard Clark's book in which he notes an immediate attempt by the Bush administration to tie Iraq to 9-11, regardless of the facts. It is in videotaped statements of Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld themselves using 9-11 to justify the Iraq war. It is in CIA documents showing that Wolfowitz, Pearl, Libby, Thief, and others cherry-picked intelligence for use by Cheney and their other bosses. It is in the Downing Street memo which says that the intelligence was being tailored to fit the policy. And it is in speeches by me and others prior to the invasion of Iraq in which we laid out the truth, predicted the inevitable results, and noted that such an invasion would be an impeachable offense and an act of treason. Now there is also evidence of a massive cover-up with respect to 9-11 itself. I spoke to both Governor Kane and Congressman Hamilton, the 9-11 Commission co-chairs, last September 11th. And they both admit that there are outright falsehoods in their official 9-11 Commission report. They know they were lied to and that those lies made their way into the final report, a report they had almost no control over. It was written by Philip Zelikow of White House Flack. The bottom line is that the official 9-11 report, tightly controlled by the White House, amounts to little but a gigantic cover-up. When combined with the confiscation of videotapes, audio tapes, black boxes, and other evidence by the FBI. It is clear that regardless of who was responsible for 9-11, the subsequent cover-up was itself a conspiracy involving elements of the White House and the intelligence establishment. Now remember, Richard Nixon wasn't undone by the two-bit break-in at the Watergate, but for the cover-up. Bill Clinton wasn't impeached for his sexual encounters with Monica Lewinsky, but for stretching the truth when asked about it. Scooter Libby isn't in jail for leaking Valerie Plain's identity, but for lying about when he learned about it. Martha Stewart didn't serve time for insider trading, but for not telling the truth about it. Is there anyone who believes the American people have been told the truth about 9-11? Well, this raises the question, if the Bush administration had nothing to hide, why did they hide everything? Were they covering up guilt or incompetence? If they were protecting the incompetent, why was no one demoted or fired or court-martialed or even reprimanded 